every guy on youtube either becomes one of two things okay they either become like weird alternative history fascists okay or they become matt perverts i'm saying it okay let's watch Donald harris let's watch Donald harris turns out people are saying that uh this is a pretty good one okay our boy Donald is popping off with this do the palestinians have a right to a separate state no i don't think they do but in 2007 the head of military intelligence for the israeli hazan abichan what if the government accuses you of supporting terrorism <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That it, that'll be not one, but multiple governments at that point, I think. Tim Pool went on Patrick Bit David. They talked about you, of course. Afix Twizzy only fucking posts fart sounds. Like, it's just starting to get annoying. Yeah, it's just like Spider Man memes and fart sounds. Like, bro, come on, get a new get a new thing. Every now and then actually send me like a real link, you know what I mean? So I develop a sense of <sighs> I don't know. I just like develop a sense of respect for your linking, for your linkage. You know what I mean? That way I don't immediately just like go, eh, it's another one of these fucking things. The army had a meeting with the U.S. ambassador in Tel Aviv. We're looking at the classified cable that summarizes what was talked about in this meeting. The topic of discussion was Iran, Syria, the Gaza Strip, and Hamas. Is this Hamas had just Marquee? won the Palestinian elections, which kicked off a fight with the other Palestinian group, which ended in Hamas taking over Gaza completely. They controlled it. And if you're wait, did I did he talk about America's involvement in this already? What? The topic of discussion was Iran, Syria, the Gaza Strip, and Hamas. Hamas had just won the Palestinian elections, which kicked. Okay, right off the jump. I don't know why Johnny always does this. Like, even when he talks about, even when he talks about, like, you know, America's allies, or if he's, like, criticizing Israel or whatever, he just always, he just always will uh, neglect to mention, like, America's involvement every step of the way. I find this to be, I find this to be rather odd. I don't know if it's by design. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe he's setting it up. He off a fight with the other Palestinian group which ended in Hamas taking over Gaza completely. They controlled it. And if you're an Israeli citizen or the US government, this is a terrible set of events. Hamas is a- Like every part of that process is directly America's fault, more so than Israel. And believe me, I will always tell you when Israel has done something wrong, I will tell you, this is one of those instances where America's own framework, America's own uh, opinion on the matter, George W. Bush's own opinion on the matter, no, not even allegedly. This is not alleged. This is not alleged. America thought PA is our guys and we can bring PA in. We should do an election. The PA people said, don't fucking do that. We do not at Fatah have enough support from the population. They know we're corrupt. They think we're like working with Israel, which is true. They think we're America's dogs, which is also true. That's why they were having the conversation with George W. Bush at the time. And, uh, and George W. Bush was like, no, 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 don't, don't listen to me. Uh, I mean, I will not listen to you. Just do the elections. You'll be fine. And then the elections happen. And of course, Hamas ran on an anti-corruption ticket. They're like, listen, we're the new guys. Like, I promise, like, we never work with Israel. We will never work with Israel. We're, the, we're not corrupt. And then they won by a 3% margin. And then, uh, and then America was like, oops, that really fucked up. That really <laughs> wasn't great, was it? Okay. And then what did they do? Oh, that's right. They took literally the PA guys, kidnapped a bunch of Hamas dudes and tortured them alongside the CIA, mind you. And then they tried to do a coup to forcibly overtake the Gaza Strip and forcibly rip control from the hands of Hamas. And of course, you know, they lost in that coup and Hamas took over the entirety of the Strip. That was objectively an American failure. Okay. I'm sure that it corresponded to Israel's interest at the time, but a lot of what he just mentioned in the first 47 seconds were almost entirely George W. Bush's fault. Violent extreme. Genuinely a uniquely bad president. Like still, to, this is why I say he's the worst American president of all time.
I think. Like, his administration was genuinely the worst administration of all time. Like, that's why Trump doesn't come near it. I mean, dude, dude, Ukraine and Georgia, okay? Ukraine and Georgia also accelerated by motherfucking George W. Bush on his way out. No, I think Bush was worse than Reagan. I think Reagan is like a close second, but I think Bush is worse than Reagan. I don't think Reagan comes near the amount of deaths. Reagan is worse for domestic policies than George W. Bush. George W. Bush is worse for, uh, George W. Bush, I think is worse for, for, uh, foreign policy, like way more deadly, not even close. Reagan broke America. Bush broke the world. And one might say that, um, one might say that Reagan's, uh, Reagan's policies were an inevitability. Really? Aren't so many problems today because of Reagan's policies? No. Neoliberalism was not invented under Ronald Reagan. It accelerated under Ronald Reagan. It continued under George, uh, it continued under Bill Clinton, which made the neoliberal attitudes permanent. Iran Contra happened under Reagan, but I'm telling you, like, guys, you know, George, George W. Bush is pretty fucking devastating on the planet. His administration, I mean. Carter did a whole bunch of things that were also uh, expressly neoliberal. I think, I'm telling you, I think, um, I think George W. Bush and his foreign policy was more destructive overall. Uh, <laughs> foreign policy wise what hasana just listed all the terrible things 9 11 al-qaeda afghanistan iraq war katrina the great recession georgia joins nato or russia invades also tax cuts and assault ban sunset laws true pretty much most of the things that we're still recovering from or continuing motherfucker drops two nukes on two cities and can't even get second place war crime olympics okay to be fair to be fair well, that's like totally unacceptable. I think that there is like a, like a moratorium due to World War II because it's like the only time we were fucking awesome. You know what I mean? That's that's my position on that matter. Like the, <laughs> I guess I'm too much of a World War II head to to say that like you know the fire bombing is bad, which I admit, and also the nukes were bad, which I admit. But like overall, it was pretty sick. Like it was the one good war. You know what I mean? So I don't think about it too much. Truman made the CIA that nuked your favorite country. Uh, Truman made the CIA and nuked your favorite country. Come on. Excuse me. One might say that those nukes accelerated what we now know and enjoy as anime. Okay. Early adaption. Or, I mean, early, early versions of anime were directly propaganda from the Japanese government. Okay. And a lot of those guys that got funding then continued onwards with anime, partially because of uh, the nukes. Just got to point that out. Anime is Truman's fault, making him a worse war criminal than Bush. Okay, stopped. How the fuck did we get here? I'm talking about Johnny Harris and Divide and Conquer. group known to commit heinous violence against civilians in Israel, and they were now in power. They controlled the Gaza Strip an hour away from Tel Aviv. But look at this leaked document. In this leaked cable, you see that the Israeli official says that Israel would be happy if Hamas took over Gaza, because it would mean that Israel could now treat Gaza like a hostile country. Three days post the ceasefire. Fair facts. Not even a joke. Good job from Johnny. Fair. And there's unrelenting bombing in Gaza. This document is a view into a strategy that right-wing factions within the Israeli government have used for decades in an effort to win one of the most divisive conflicts in the world today, in which two groups are fighting over one piece of holy land. And one side is winning by using a very specific tactic, one that the world says is illegal and immoral, and one that worked for a short time, but that recently has been shown to be a recipe for even worse violence and conflict and suffering. Okay. In this video, I want to lay out what this strategy looks like and show you how it failed. I know this is a topic that is full of deep emotions that has real stakes in people's lives. Please know that I am earnest in my efforts to tell this story with clarity and with accuracy. And also, please note that this is not a full account of the conflict between Israel and its neighbors. But I do hope that it sheds light on a view of the conflict that sometimes- I swear he just remade a section of John Oliver's video only in that self-involved style where he makes it look like he's investigating it in real time and digging up some hidden secrets from obscure archives, but it's definitely copying John Oliver minus America's involvement. I'm only beginning to realize that if Austinox actually operated in the same way for me, 
And I just like sat down and and I don't know, got Marsha like film me as I speak sexily into a camera. Um, and covered all of the things that I cover, sitting on my fucking dumb ass, uh, chirping and and uh what my haters like to call reading tweets. When the tweets that I'm reading are, you know, journalists breaking their stories first on Twitter, um, which is perfectly valid. But I think that's pure projection from those who read Wikipedia pages but like not even really read them and internalize, but instead just skim Wikipedia pages to find arguments that they think benefit their position after they've already made up their minds on the genocidal positions that they take. But like I said, the aesthetics, if I had the, if I maintain the aesthetics of a Johnny Harris, a John Old Harris, I think I would uh, kind of pop off, but I'm too lazy. Or rather, I like doing this style way more now. Eventually you'll have to evolve. True. This gets lost in all of the yelling. No, you are lazy, Azan. Okay, that's a little ridiculous that you said I'm fucking lazy. I'm on my... I've done like 10 hours every day this week. Come on now. Can't do both? I can't. For 2,000 years, Jewish people around the world have been persecuted and segregated and ostracized from society. True. That is a fact. By the time the 1800s came around, it became clear that wherever the Jews went, persecution would follow. This is when a movement emerged, calling for Jews to come together and to create a country for themselves, where they could govern themselves and be free from all of this racist hatred. The creation of a Jewish country would have at the top of its priority list, the security of the Jewish people. But the yeah, it was just failed miserably at, but also um, I wonder if we'll talk about the other alternatives, which are kind of funny. The big question was where? <laughs> Several places floated around in proposals, oh, he is. Argentina, even True. modern day Kenya, which back then was Uganda. But most people in this movement wanted the Jews to return to their historic homeland, a place called Palestine. I mean, I think like the the OG Zionists were not exactly like super religious or anything. I mean, it was not an accident. They were definitely way more like on board with the colonialism aspect than they were about uh, the religious aspect. As a matter of fact, I think that the reason why they were, were uh, down for uh, Palestine was because they could tie it to they could personally tie it to some kind of like um judaism argument and maybe get the more religious jews on board who were not on board with going to palestine at all yeah theodore herzl was not uh theodore herzl was not jewish i mean uh, he was he, he was not a um uh, he was not a religious uh, jew there were also very, like, um, yeah, he was secular. There was also a, a lot of different types of Zionism at the time, which people point back to. Like, they'll be like, Einstein was a Zionist. And it's like, dog, literally things that he said, I say and you claim is anti-Semitic when I say it. You know? Like, Einstein, who was supposed to be the first president, right? Uh, who is a socialist, by the way. Uh, straight up said about the Irgun and Haganah and the other militias that they were insanely violent and and that uh like his Zionism um his his Zionism was very different than the way we understand Zionism now. He very openly yeah he 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 very openly condemned the the militias and said that that is not what it's supposed to be. That's their word? We can't use it? What do you mean? Where Jews built their temple and their culture 3,000 years ago, but then were exiled. And now there was this call to return, so that Jews could feel safe after 18 centuries of Jewish suffering. So as the 1900s came around, tens of thousands of Jews, mostly from Europe, flocked to Palestine which eventually came under control of the British. 
the British were getting ready to leave this. Yeah, growing up, I knew Einstein as an anti-Zionist figure, but today he's a Netanyahu supporter despite being dead for over half a century. He's also a big fan of capitalism, famously. He loves capitalism, and he also loves Israel. He's, he loves Israel, and he loves capitalism. Don't look it up. Just trust me on this, this region. Please don't and look we're it We're struggling up. to contain the growing conflict between native Arabs and all these Jewish immigrants. Then in the 1940s came a horrific genocide against the Jewish people in Europe, led out by Hitler and his Nazi regime. This created a wave of international support for this idea of giving the Jewish people a homeland where they could be safe. Before they left, the British asked the UN to determine what would replace them in Palestine. And the UN decided that Palestine would become two new countries, one for the Jews and one for the Palestinian Arabs that had already been living in this region. The Jewish state colored light, the Arab state dark, Jaffa to go to the Arabs, Jerusalem internationalized. But as happens when outsiders draw lines on old land, there was a problem here. Within these borders that were meant for the new Jewish country, hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Arabs were living who would soon have to leave their homes to move to their side of the line. Abi Alman devrimini Rosa, Rosa Luxemburg'ü yeni öğrendim amına koyayım. Sosyal demokratların. Evet. Aynı boku yine yiyoruz bak. Sosyal demokrat zannediyor kendilerini insanlar. Burada işte e, Avrupa sosyal demokratı zannediyorlar kendilerini. E, devamlı bağırıyorlar komünistlerin amına koyayım, sosyalistlerin amına koyayım. Be, 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 be. Aynı boku yiyorlar. Hepsi faşist oluyor günün sonunda işte. Okay, wait. I'm going to pause there because as I said, this is not a full history of the Arab-Israeli conflict. We actually just made a video on our new channel, Search Party, which focuses on what happens next. The conflict between Israel and its Arab neighbors. Oh my go God. Watch... Not one, but two, two Johnny Harris's. That link's in the description. It'll give you some useful context. For now, just know that this led to a horrific conflict. Jewish militias forced over 700,000 Arabs out of their homes, turning them into refugees. The proposed borders shifted around, turned into ceasefire lines, and after all was said and done, the Jewish people did indeed get their own country, the state of Israel. And the two important points here are that number one, the very foundation of the Israeli country is for security of the Jewish people after- Yeah, some stuff happened in between, but you know, it's fine. The Arab leaders are in a bind over Israel by surge party. Oh my God, he's getting high. He's getting even more into maps. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Oh God, everyone is doing real life lore style videos. I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. I swear to God, YouTubers, stop making real life lore style videos challenge impossible difficulty. Why? Every guy, every guy on YouTube either becomes one of two things, okay? They either become like weird alternative history fascist, okay? Or they become map perverts. Or obviously the debate perverts, but that's an entirely separate thing. Like I'm saying like for YouTube only, video on demand only channels, they, all of them are liberals, okay? Every single one is a liberal of a different variety. I do think that autism and Hearts of Iron 4, Paradox Games in general, has absolutely parti like played a big role in this, okay? I know some, are, some of you are going to say, well, uh, you just said autism twice, but, all, but I I'm serious. I feel like people are losing their minds. After nearly 2,000 years of persecution. And number two, the location they chose to set it up was becoming, as a result of this conflict, not much safer than Europe. That's a tension that follows this whole story. Okay, so now let's fast forward to 1967. <laughs> Dude, there's a lot of stuff that he is just... Yeah, why did, why did it become, like, less safe for Jewish people? Surely it was all the... the, the immediate anti-semitism that the the arab muslims and christians felt in, deep in their hearts across the board that's probably what it was i assume and definitely not like the massacres and the displacement he literally said he won't talk about all the details in this video sure is this true that's true israel has Fair. its country and they fight a short war with their arab neighbors and they win that war and they take over all of this land <coughs> a huge victory for them I'm going to take away the Sinai Peninsula from here because they did give that back to Egypt as part of a peace deal a few years later. Israel now controls important pieces of land that enlarge their Jewish country. 
many saw this victory as a sign from God that they were actually entitled to be here. But once again, Palestinians, nearly a million of whom had been kicked out of their homes, were living here in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, which Israel now controlled, but they weren't really sure what to do with it. And it's this territory that would become the stage for the strategy that is the topic of this video, where over time, this land would be sliced up with roads and checkpoints, walls and other military infrastructure that would control the movement and lives of the Palestinians. Soon, even Israeli citizens would start to move out here in large numbers, building full-on towns and further dividing up this territory. Moving citizens into occupied territory like this is something that the world has deemed illegal and immoral. So this occupation starts in 1966. So disrespectful for people who often to be compared to real-life lore videos. <laughs> Seven, and it goes on for decades. I just said map Until eventually, tree. the Palestinians living here can't handle it anymore, and they start fighting back. This is known as the first uprising, or intifada. It started with boycotts, but escalated into mass protests, where Palestinians of all ages would throw stones and sometimes Molotov cocktails at much better equipped Israeli soldiers. It was Palestinian rage exploding against Israeli occupation, and it went on for years. The Israeli government would respond by cracking down, killing many Palestinians. Another important- This is like, no, this is like, guys, this is not a bad assessment. Sure. Uh, there's aspects of this that he like skipped because it's, you know, there's a lot of details to slam into 24 minutes, but it's shockingly insightful so far. And I don't think betrays, uh, pal the Palestinian humanity at all. Important thing that happens around the same time down in the uh, occupied the bar, Gaza the bar is so that a new low. movement forms, promising to fight back against this occupation, calling for the destruction of Israel. The group is called Hamas. The first intifada showed that this wasn't gonna work. Chopping up Palestinian land, oppressing them, keeping them in this occupation was only going to produce more violence. It wasn't gonna fulfill Israel's promise to provide security and safety for the Jewish people. They had to switch course. The security of the Israeli people will be reconciled with the hopes of the Palestinian people. I literally agree with this framing. This is, again, I pre I I pre watch just what he says. Israel's a right to defend itself against terrorist babies. No, I mean this is a better framing. Like uh, Rabin seeing a necessity for peaceful negotiations as a security measure is literally better framing than like Israel decided to be kind out of the kindness of their hearts. And Rabin is like a peaceful dove who just loves Palestinians a lot. And there will be more security and more hope. For all. So in the 1990s, they start getting serious about peace talks with the Palestinians, and they come to this agreement called the Oslo Accords, which for the first time establishes a Palestinian government authority and giving it power to govern pockets of land in the West Bank. It also gave the Palestinians some authority over almost all of the Gaza Strip, though there were still settlements in all of these places. This was a big deal for this conflict. Like both sides were talking to each other and coming to agreements that was giving like authority to the Palestinians. But another theme of the story is that hardliners can use violence to derail peace. And that's exactly what happened here. Right-wing Israelis start holding rallies, calling their prime minister a traitor and a Nazi for giving land to the Palestinians. Some of these rallies are led by a now familiar character, Benjamin Netanyahu. The people also of Israel correct. want pretty real good. peace, and real peace means peace with security. God, I'm so fucking brain broken that like an accurate assessment of historical, like recent history is enough for me to be like, this is incredible. Thank you so much for doing this. I am so used to liberal outlets just like straight up slanting this in the most annoying fucking pro Likudnik ass way that... Whenever I see someone just straight up be like, yeah, did you guys know that Benjamin Netanyahu did let's murder Yitzhak Rabin protests? You know what I mean? It, it's just like, uh, it's shocking. He's about the both sides of this. Peace they can trust with a partner they can trust and they don't feel they have it here. We want a real peace, not a fake one. But the peace talks continue. With all our neighbors, a comprehensive peace. And shortly after signing the second part of this deal to give Palestinians some land, 
the Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin is assassinated by a far-right Israeli. Hamas conducts bus bombings, and the next year, Benjamin Netanyahu is elected as the Prime Minister. Yeah, okay, there's, uh, you know, there's some stuff in between there that lead to Hamas switching away from military targets directly to civilian targets and, and doing the famed bus bombings. Um, that part, I think maybe he doesn't know. Because to be fair, not a lot of people know that. I don't think that was like a, I don't think that was like a lie by omission. But I think that that's probably um, the, uh, the, the uh, massacre at the mosque happens in that time frame. And I think that he did not mention that. This is when Hamas decides to change its, mil um, change its militant targets to uh, civilian targets as well. In, um, in Hebron, right? Your braces are pretty, thank you. He did connect it to the collapse of the peace process and not the other way around like libs typically do. Don't forget you said you agree with the framework. Okay, stop. The Kahanist terrorist... Baruch Goldstein, okay, born in Brooklyn, New York, uh, goes into a mosque in Hebron and uh, com in the in the Israeli occupied West Bank, and commits one of the absolute worst acts of Jewish supremacist terror. This obviously uh, creates a a uh, massive commotion. He's beaten to death, um, and following the massacre, Jewish Israelis are barred from entering major Arab communities in Hebron. The Israeli government also took extreme measures against Palestinians following the deadly riots after the massacre. Okay? So, like, the Christchurch shooting? Kind of. Honestly, you could just say white supremacist. Lamar. I mean, yeah, he is. I mean, he is, yeah. Except, not fully to say he's white supremacist, because, like, you know, there's a lot of uh, Kahanis and, and those who celebrate Baruch Goldstein who are not white. Like Itamar ben -Gvir. So... People in Israel are also very okay with Baruch Goldstein. They even put rocks on his grave, the Jewish equivalent of leaving flowers. Yeah, they also, I mean, what is it, like 10% regard him as a hero or something? Still, like, polls are conducted in Israel all the time uh, about things like that. And I remember, like, one of the last polls that I read was that, like, a not insignificant chunk of uh, Israeli Jews specifically considered him to be uh, a good figure, like a hero, and his actions to be good. Um, 0 0.46, thank you for the 35 total gifted subs, by the way. That's crazy. Stir of Israel. Netanyahu is a key figure in this story because his worldview embodies a way of thinking that has taken root in Israel in recent years. The idea that the only way to give true security to the Jewish people is by doing whatever is necessary to stop the Palestinians from having a state anywhere in these borders. Look, I'm 28 years old. I've had to defend my country in two wars. I fucking love... Dude, these are... Yeah, 10% think he's a hero. 10% of Israeli Jews think terrorist Baruch Goldstein is a national hero. Like, ay ay ay, It's just so... 10% is pretty low, to be fair. Brother, this is like... A, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, he's a straight-up terrorist. Like, a really... It's like 10% of fucking New Zealanders saying the Christchurch shooter is a hero. What do you mean? He's just like... like it, I mean, I always say, like, Americans, you can always find 30% uh, in America to agree on anything. I feel like I don't think 10% of Americans would support Dylan Roof, or maybe they would. I don't fucking know. I don't want to know. <clears throat> so suddenly you're against terrorists? Yes, I am. Terrorism is a political designation applied to uh, Americas or whoever the state that we align with and their foreign adversaries, okay? The only terrorism that I find appropriate is one that emancipates, like on the top of the hour ad break, when you purchase a $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime. Okay? That is an emancipatory act that will save you from the terror of the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour. This is how it works. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. <sighs> Fucking got him. Freaking got him. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, buddy. 
Where's the room at right now? <laughs> I knew you were going to fucking try and debate me. Exactly. I knew. That's why I clapped it first. Zero point. Thank you for the 25. Get the subs. Anyway. It's like if 10% of Pennsylvania supported the Tree of Life shooter. Yeah, exactly. But then again, Americans do support Kyle Rittenhouse. So I don't fucking know. God, we are such a messed up country. And in many battles, nobody wants peace more than Israel. But the stumbling block to the road for peace is this demand for a PLO state, which will mean more war, which will mean more violence in the Middle East. And I think, I sincerely believe, if this demand is abandoned, we can have real and genuine peace. So that was Netanyahu when he was a 28-year-old. But when he becomes the prime minister a couple decades later, he spends his term pee. sabotaging the peace accords that his predecessor had worked so hard to create, claiming that the occupation of all this land and its people wasn't actually conquest, but rather the key for security of the Jewish people. They had to do this. Security was the one and only justification for all of this. So under his watch, settlers continue to move into the West Bank. We found this leaked video of Benjamin Netanyahu talking to some settlers in the West Bank. <laughs> The cameraman does turn off the camera for a moment, but then turns it back on moments later. He is admitting to sabotaging the peace accords that the Israeli government had signed with the Palestinians. That because he disagreed with them, he wanted to sabotage them because he was so against a Palestinian state or any form of Palestinian autonomy in this land. And then he goes on to explain what his real thinking is on the situation. <laughs> Netanyahu is a fantastic pol Bro, really watching the Tete -te coverage, like that's crazy. Isn't that from uh, the Turkish radio television broadcaster, Tere Te? Politician and statesman, and he's able to sort of cover up a lot of these policies in the name of security. But here we see what he Damn. really thinks as he's talking to these settlers. Based Turkish broadcaster, Turkish recorded. national broadcaster, so, defender Johnny Harris. The appetite for peace. Why is he acting like he's the first person to find this? I think he like narratively presents himself as a guy who's like doing deep investigations and like finding this stuff. But... I, I, I don't know. I just, I think that it's like, um, I think it's like an aesthetic choice. He's just like storytelling. He's not like a deep investigator at all. Um, even though it is kind of sad that I guess in the mind of, uh, the average American hog, it's like in the mind of the average American hog, they're like, this is fucking crazy. Like, how did he find this stuff? He follows Zay squirrel, even though he dunks on him for the clip breaks down on both sides. Palestinians come to the conclusion that the Israelis aren't really serious about giving them any. I mean, it's, it's just, it's fun. It's cool to see a liberal uh, adjacent uh, content creator make uh, videos like this. Same with John Oliver. Um, because like, I fucking talk about all this shit every single goddamn day for hours. Okay. Literally for hours. But my name is Hassan. I got a big old fucking beard. And I am the defender of all things terror in the minds of many, like, impressionable... I was going to say impressionable teens, but let's be real. There's plenty of old people in the uh, debate lord uh, community <clears throat> who think that I am a terrorism defender, supporter, and have, like, an unnuanced perspective that is uh, revolving around America bad and nothing else. So they're not going to listen to me. So I'm on board with, I'm on board with uh, guys like this saying the same shit any kind of autonomy in the West Bank or Gaza, that their situation will never change. And once again, they rise up in a second intifada. This one much more violent, much more coordinated. Hamas becomes a major player in the violence with suicide bombings and attacks. Israel responds with great force. And during the fighting, a thousand Israelis and 3000 Palestinians are killed. At this point, the Netanyahu way of seeing the world is starting to look a lot better. Peace talks didn't work. All they did was produce more violence. And so maybe the only way to ensure security is to go back to full-blown occupation of controlling every move of the Palestinians in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. So at this point, 
the occupation gets more and more suffocating. More walls, more barriers, more checkpoints, more settlements. Then in 2005, Israel withdraws from the Gaza Strip, letting the Palestinian Authority have total control there. They turn their attention entirely to their historic homeland of Judea and Samaria, which is the West Bank. The next year, an election is held in the Palestinian authorities, and the winner surprised the world and would create a new chapter for this conflict. The winner of these elections was Hamas. This is a very <laughs> I stumbled into a Fox News comment section about you, and they literally think you raised a million dollars so you could send it to Hamas for weapons. Like, dead ass, they flat out said it. That those were your intentions. The brain rot is so severe. It's truly insane. It's really funny that you're saying that because those are like, you know, literal boomers reading and commenting on a Fox News article and they sound identical to like neoliberal Redditors. I'm not even joking. Like that sentiment is expressed by 75 year old racists that are diehard lifelong Republican Party voters and the based Biden Chad defending neoliberals who say the exact same things like actually yeah i can't tell like you know how there was a a, a google doc going around and it's like is this a zionist who said this or a nazi you could do that about like is this a fucking destiny supporter or is this a fox news uh comment section okay except you could probably tell easily because like they say or you, it's better if you do like a, is this a 4chan groiper or a destiny fan and uh, there is no difference between the 4chan poll, Groypers, and Destiny fans. They say the exact same shit. Like, literally. <laughs> D fans are more racist? Yeah. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> Very bad results for the Palestinians more openly and racist. for Israel. The incumbent Palestinian party that had lost the election tried to forcibly hold on to power. And soon, the two Palestinian parties were fighting with each other and it results in this split between the two Palestinian governments. It turns into violence, and when the dust settles, there's suddenly a bitter divide between these two Palestinian groups, Hamas completely taking over the Gaza Strip. And this gets us back to our leaked document that we started this video with, where an Israeli official is saying that they would actually be happy if Hamas took over the Gaza Strip, because now they can treat Gaza like a hostile country. Now that they're not occupying it, they're not responsible for the two million civilians who are living there. They can impose a blockade to control anything coming in and out of the Gaza Strip. People, food, medicine, money, building supplies. But there was another reason why Israel was happy that Hamas now controlled the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian government was now deeply divided. Hamas ruling Gaza and the West Bank being run by a more moderate, secular Palestinian faction. And crucially, neither considered the other to be legitimate, which weakened their ability to negotiate for any kind of state, for any kind of country, especially when Hamas still refused to- This is shockingly good from Johnny Harris. It's nice, maybe some liberals will learn a thing or two. They do love him. Recognize and Israel's right to even exist. This division. Yeah, Johnny Harris is more like Johnny Hamas. Right dude. What's happening here? Of the Israeli right. Hello? And this gets us back to Benjamin Netanyahu, that enemy of the earlier peace talks. He gets elected once again in 2009, declaring himself Mr. Security and promising to provide safety to Israeli citizens who are still shaken from the Second Intifada and are now worried that Hamas now controls the entirety of the Gaza Strip. Netanyahu's playbook was already made clear. He had said it point blank. It's what he had been doing for years, sabotaging peace talks that would give Palestinians any kind of authority over this land and continuing to build settlements while continuing, in his words in that leaked tape, to hit the Palestinians hard, to make it unbearable for them, a complete assault on the Palestinian government, dividing and slowly conquering the Palestinian people, making life hard and desperate for them, controlling their lives, watching their every move. And this is where we get to this paradoxical alignment, almost alliance between Benjamin Netanyahu and Hamas, the enemy of Israel. As long as Hamas 
held control over the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian cause would remain weak and divided. Netanyahu would feel justified in imposing this crippling blockade of the Gaza Strip, which in turn gave Hamas legitimacy among the people of the Gaza Strip, showing that their armed struggle against Israeli oppression was justified, provoking them to launch rockets into Israel to show that they were actually doing something, unlike the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, which in turn bolstered Netanyahu's narrative that the Palestinians actually don't want peace, they want violence and the destruction of Israel. And the only way for security is more occupation, more oppression. So instead of try to take Hamas out, Netanyahu overtly supported them by approving huge transfers of untraceable cash literally delivered in suitcases into the Gaza Strip, cash that would inevitably end up in the hands of Hamas to be used against Israel. He legitimized Hamas by negotiating with them releasing a thousand Palestinian prisoners in exchange for one Israeli. The Israeli soldier held captive by Palestinian militants for five years is expected to be freed within days. The more Netanyahu could keep Hamas in power in Gaza, but keep them contained, the more he could ensure that Palestinians remained divided. He could keep peace talks from ever happening, which in turn gave him time to continue to pursue his expansionist project in the West Bank. And indeed, since 2009, when Netanyahu became the prime minister, the number of settlements in the West Bank has only gone up. And if you look at this- Dude, I feel like people are gonna yell at him for this. I mean, I guess he's doing the, the classic, like, uh, everything is actually Netanyahu's fault, which it's not the case at all. And it, it completely betrays the notion that this is like an, a, an extension of Zionism, like the Zionist project. Netanyahu might be a far-right shithead, but also he is continuing along the agenda of Zionism. Um, yeah, I feel like he's going to do like eight videos on China and Cuba. He's going to be like, the Cuban blockade is good. Here's why. Here's why we should drone strike Cuba <laughs> to make up for this video. The, the classic one to two equation. <clears throat> Um, that's definitely the current narrative. My lip friend recently said he hates Netanyahu, which shocked me. No, 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 no. They, no, guys, everybody always says they hate Netanyahu. That's not new. That's not new at all. Liberal Zionism has always talked about how much they hate Netanyahu, how much they despise him. But also, they kind of align with him when, you know, he's pummeling Gaza. The Palestinian cause was strong before the rise of Hamas. Was the PLO on the verge of achieving statehood after 60 years, but it went to shit because Hamas won the election in 2000? No, of course not. Of course, the Palestinian cause was strong before the election of Hamas. Why do you like this Fed, bro? No, the Palestinian, the, the Palestinian cause probably was, I would say it was probably strongest uh, during the first election of Arafat. Like the Palestinians were most united at that point. And even then, the, the uh, Rabin deal was really shitty overall. Hamas as uh as a viable political movement could only happen after israel reneged on its promises that it didn't really even give to be fair like israel gave shittier promises uh shitty promises that it didn't even follow through on is hamas a reskin muslim brotherhood or did i fall for propaganda no hamas started off as an offshoot of the muslim brotherhood but the modern day hamas is is not this map, you can see how these settlements just weave through and carve up this land, making it impossible to even fathom what a Palestinian state could look like, which is precisely the point of the strategy. I actually <clears throat> reported out here visiting the settlements back when I was at Vox. I did a series talking to the settlers, trying to understand why they live out there, what it's like to live in these settlements that are strangely peaceful and banal and just mundane. People live in their lives because they're protected by the army. If you want a deeper dive on settlements, you can go watch that series. But if you're Netanyahu- Peaceful terrorist engaging in an act of terrorism simply by existing in settlements that have cut out Bontestans over the last 16 years. You think your plan is working. like. You see all these settlements going up. The international community can't do anything about it. They keep supporting you. Every once in a while, there's some flare up in the West Bank where Palestinians get into a fight with Israeli soldiers, but it, it gets contained. That's not how that works. 
No, it's settlers deliberately go and fuck up uh, uh, Palestinians and their farms and shit like that. And then the IDF comes in and cleans up. Every few years, Hamas fires some rockets, which then gives Israel the excuse to go, as they put it, cut the grass by conducting a short, swift, violent military campaign to keep Hamas at bay. And every day that goes by, the notion of a Palestinian state becomes less and less feasible. This is one reason why a far right is... I mean, he said mowing the lawn, like, or cutting the grass. That's, again, not a thing that you hear, I would say, from liberal Zionists. This video definitely is great for... This video is definitely great for uh, the mainstream audience. He didn't use a keyword that I think he should have used, and that would have made it like a 9 out of 10 video, the keyword being apartheid. If he used another keyword, the Nakba, that would be, it would be a 1010 video overall. Those words do matter, by the way. And that's why those NGOs matter as well in normalizing certain positions. Remember when he used to shit on this guy? No, I always, I watch Johnny Harris videos because I'm his biggest fucking fan. Okay. I watch all the Johnny Harris videos. When he drops one, we we're like Supreme fuck boys waiting outside of the Supreme store, camping out, okay? The difference is, of course, for every one good Johnny Harris video, there's like two really bad ones. Israeli lawmaker called Hamas an asset. So divide and conquer has been the name of the game in Israel for a long time, but especially in the last 16 years under Netanyahu. And again, to the people in charge, they think it's worth. Yeah, this is like, this is like McDonald's you're right. This is exactly like McDonald's UK coming out and being like, Oi, Prov, we love, we love Palestine, actually. Our views have been misconstrued. Or like Noah Schnapp and Brett Gelman accidentally on the same day revealing, uh, releasing videos about how, like, just kidding, they didn't, like, uh, champion the genocide of Palestinians. Like, this signals a, a turn. And now many of you might say, well, dude, it took, like, nearly 30,000 Palestinians being ruthlessly slaughtered. But I do think, I keep saying this, but I do think that uh, the tide is, is slowly but surely shifting. Okay. Maybe this violent status quo, this equilibrium can hold and the far right can get exactly what they want. It's security for the Jewish people and expansion into all of this land. And maybe the occupation will break the Palestinian spirit and they would give up on their dream of having a state. But that's not what happened. On October 7th, 2023, we- Sam Cedar said he thinks Brandon will be the last Zionist Democratic president. I mean, yeah, but that's kind of ominous <laughs> because like, that could mean that the genocidal project of Israel comes to a close. Don't know if it'll end in the first Brandon administration, to be fair. Honestly, I credit Israeli Zionists with the most tied, seemingly shift little by little by being the most deranged lunatics. Oh, 100%. No, it's, it's, it's all social media. 100%. It's social media both because, like, everyone that is in defense of Israel is coming out like fucking barbaric, bloodthirsty monsters. And it's also because, like, the IDF keeps posting their straight-up, like, Nazi-style behavior on social media. And also because the Palestinians are able to directly advocate for their own uh, humanity, right? Their propaganda is really bad because it's grown stale. The Israeli propaganda is bad because they've enjoyed full-throated support from the United States of America, unconditional support for so many years that I, I think it's, you know, it, it's hard to shake the idea that like, no dog, you can't control the narrative as, diff as, as well as you, you want to. The ICJ may have more sway. We'll see. I mean, many changes are coming. It sucks that it came at the tail end of, uh, I mean, it sucks that, that so many Palestinian lives were ended by Israel for this marginal, this incremental change in the right direction. We also have Western Zionists that are becoming increasingly deranged as well. You know, for sure, because Western Zionists also enjoy that 
that level of prominence and and no pushback for far too long they're they're also they also have a harder time advocating for israel's actions because there's simply more people paying attention i'm telling you i think the turning point not to give too much of props to the fucking the ngos because they aren't exactly great either but i think human rights watch but and and amnesty international collectively calling israel uh correctly calling israel collectively an apartheid state genuinely started giving a lot more people the permission to say that without fear that they will be uh branded anti-semitic you know doctors without borders no but Selim is great i'm just saying that uh sorry i was just talking about human rights watch and amnesty international stuff like that but it's just the fact that anyone seriously thinks this might end well is wild i mean well is is you know all things considered well in comparison to what it looks like right now or what it looked like it would turn into relative term the humanitarian situation in gaza says the u.s ambassador to the u.n linda thomas greenfield okay the humanitarian situation in Gaza requires urgent action. We need to do more to get aid into the hands of Palestinians in need. In the U.S., uh, and the U.S. fully supports the work of Sigrid Kog and the U.N. Senior Humanitarian and Reconstruction Coordinator for Gaza. Jeremy Scale says, What's remarkable here is that there appears to be no attachment to the reality that it is the U.S. that has armed Israel, prevented a ceasefire, and served as Israel's chief political and diplomatic protector throughout the indiscriminate bombing campaign and invasion of Gaza, which is true. But the fact that there is this like deviation from the norm instead of the John Kirby adjacent uh, endless posturing is definitely interesting. Consider answering my question, says Kyle Anwar. Wait, what? Oh, the land was took back from them by force in Sinai? You didn't even ask a question, but you're right. Wait, what? Do you think the U.S. government supports Zionists just because they're political influence or despite that there's also a general mistrust across the board in Arabs due to racial, religious, slash creed differences? That's your question. I mean, I think that the American government likes Israel for uh, material reasons. That's it. All the more convenient that their enemies are, uh, they happen to be enemies that are aligned with our enemies, you know, Muslims, Arabs. People with no influence, people that the American government or the American population is primed into hating unconditionally and fearing, especially in the aftermath of 9-11. We saw how wrongheaded this theory of security was. In an unprecedented surprise attack, the militant Hamas rulers of Gaza sent dozens of fighters into Israel by land, sea, and air. This deadly attack launched by Hamas showed us that while Netanyahu's strategy of divide and conquer might be good for taking over more land, what it's not good for is making good on the original promise of Israel, which is ensuring the security of the Jewish people. In fact, his strategy has produced exactly the opposite. Now, the responsibility for what happened on October 7th lies with the people who committed those acts of terror, Hamas fighters and their leaders. There is no excuse or justification for their actions. But the point I'm trying to make with this video is that there's also others that need to stand accountable here. Those who used Hamas as a pawn to continue this divide and conquer policy, who are now engaged in a campaign of mass bloodshed on civilians, they deserve to stand accountable as well to the Israeli people and to the countries that support Israel. I believe in the need for a Jewish state. I do. I think that's a very reasonable proposal that Jewish people should feel safe somewhere in this world. Yeah, I don't think it's Hamas's fault. Like, what's happening in Gaza is not Hamas's fault. It's not. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. You don't blame Osama bin Laden for fucking uh, what happened in Afghanistan. Or I guess some people do. Or Iraq. The people that blame Osama bin Laden for Afghanistan and Iraq are fucking ridiculous. Did I misunderstand what he said? World, I think to the kids, they deserve to announce with this video. No excuse or justification for their actions. But the point I'm trying. Oh, 
Oh, he's saying Hamas is responsible for October 7, not what came after. Okay, fair. Facts. God damn. My bad. Okay, Johnny. Cooking. Fuck. Which is ensuring the security of the Jewish people. In fact, his strategy has produced exactly the opposite. <laughs> Now, the responsibility for what happened on October 7th lies with the people who- Damn, dog. That's like, this is literally something that his, like, target audience would probably yell at him and call him anti-Semitic for. Kind of crazy. those acts of terror. Hamas fighters and their leaders. There is no excuse or justification for their actions. But the point I'm trying to make with this video is that there's also others that need to stand accountable here. Those who used Hamas as a pawn to continue this divide and conquer policy, who are now engaged in a campaign of mass bloodshed on civilians. They deserve to stand accountable as well to the Israeli people and to the countries that support Israel. I believe in the need for a Jewish state. I do, I think that's a very reasonable proposal that Jewish people should- f Like that I don't agree with. If there was like unoccupied land, certainly. Okay, but that is it tricky situation when you say i believe in the need for a jewish state you end up giving a major concession to the zionist project that dictates that even in its like most theoretically peaceful capacity still has to maintain demographic control over israel implying that you can't have too many Arabs. You can't have too many Palestinian citizens of Israel that are not Jewish. So what do you do then? The necessitation of a Jewish state is at the heart of the violence that Israel conducts. Like the, the notion that there is a necessity for a Jewish state for matters of security is quite literally the major reason as to why Zionism as a violent ethno state project can continue and be defended in liberal circles, right? You can't, you know, you can't do that. I don't think, I, I don't think you can, uh, like, I don't know why he described all of this and said, I think there needs to be a Jewish state. Feel safe somewhere in this world. And yet what we're looking also like Jewish people should feel safe somewhere in this world. I'm sorry, New York is right there, and so is Los Angeles, okay? The notion that, like, Jewish people can't feel safe in the United States of America is one that I, as an American citizen, actually feel kind of shitty about, okay? Especially because, like, what the fuck are we doing? Jewish people are literally safer in Los Angeles or New York than they are only two cities in the USA. Yeah, like the only two important cities in the United States of America, okay? But yeah, I, I think like, I think Jewish people, and this is not my perspective, this is the perspective of actual, uh, you know, Jewish Americans that happen to be anti-Zionist for the most part, but, you know, they say they feel safer in America than they do in Israel, which is fair. Like, you forgot Boca Raton. I mean, New York City specifically has uh, a higher number of Jewish people living in it than, like, I guess every single Israeli city, with the exception of, like, two. So, yeah, America has three of the five highest Jewish populated cities. Or no, America has the high... Wait, what the fuck? Never mind. New York City is the... New York City has the highest number of of uh jewish people living in one area in one one city on the planet jerusalem has literally not even <laughs> jerusalem barely is a third los angeles and new york by the way is not a fucking joke that's why i mentioned los angeles and new york tel aviv has less jews and then chicago and then boston prager you take dennis prager said the exact same thing wait really <laughs> what did he Wait, why would he say that? Dennis Prager loves Israel, though. Dennis Prager 100% is like, Israel needs to exist. Or else America is like... <laughs> if Israel doesn't exist, then, um, then you know, Jews are cooked. They're, they're done. They're donezo. Lonk? What does lonk mean? It takes three Israel city populations to equal New York City's population amount. Yeah. And for the record, I'm, I'm fucking proud of that. Like, I think it was genuinely offensive like legitimately offensive 
when Joe Biden said that uh, without Israel, Jews are not safe anywhere around the world. Like, that shit was gross, dude. You're the president of a country that has almost the same number of Jewish people as, like, the Jewish ethno state. Okay? Ridiculous. Like, have a, have a sense of pride. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, it's so funny because most Jews in the world haven't even been to Israel. They don't even know it as their home, myself included. Yeah, it's it's just ridiculous. I feel like that always goes back to the same, like, stupid-ass, like, dual loyalty narrative that is inherently uh, anti-Semitic or just xenophobic in general. You know what I mean? Where you're just, like, the notion that, like, oh, if you're a, a Jew, you're not an American. Like, you're Israeli, actually. This is fucking insane. You know? Looking at isn't it. The Israeli project, the way that it's been wielded in its current form, produces the exact opposite of security for the Jewish people. Thanks for watching, and I know that you probably have thought. Türk düşmanızın tayyip bırakıyorum. Bırakma! Amına koyayım. We lost another Turk. He said you're an enemy of the Turks. I'm unfollowing. Made me sad. Thoughts on the video? 7 out of 10? 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Germany was supposed to be safe too. That's what we were taught, brought up, being told. Wait, what? I don't... That I don't understand because like everywhere in Europe was just not safe for Jews. Most places were, most places outside of like the Mena, immediate Mena region were just straight up not safe. Most places outside of the Mena region were just, as far as I understand, straight up not safe uh, for, for Jewish people in general, at least historically. Uh, this includes Russia as well, until, you know, the uh, <laughs> supreme Jewish ideology of socialism came up. That's why it's always funny when motherfuckers are like, bro, I can't believe you. <laughs> Hassan, you're so anti-Semitic. So stupid. Anyway, yeah. Judeo-Bolshevism. As a Jew, I will take credit for socialism. Do it. <laughs> 